Many thanks for staying tuned to West Africa Democracy Radio and welcome to In the Sahel, WADR's weekly security magazine that delves into the heart of the African security crisis, telling the stories and strategies to shape the region's response to pressing challenges. I'm Abdullahi Hassan, your host. Last week's episode was about the progress made with the Accra Initiative, a joint task force by some ECOWAS member states to combat terrorism. This week's theme, however, shares almost the same DNA as the previously treated topic since it is about the kinetic approach to insecurity. We are asking if the departure of foreign troops from the Sahel improved the security situation in the region? Unfortunately, the answer to that question must be no, it is not. It has not improved. The first reason is that coups in and of themselves usher in periods of instability, which means that uh, as the military start playing politics in the capital cities where they stage their coups, the uh, security situation in the countries that they are now supposed to govern get neglected. And therefore, it creates a vacuum which is filled in by non-state armed groups. And unfortunately, in the Sahel, that's exactly what's happened in all three countries. There is, however, a divided opinion on this question. With the departure of these international forces, the Malin army now has taken over all the power concerning the uh, situation. Now, first we see the improvement on the ground where they reconquered many areas which were not under the Malian control from almost a decade and but in a within a two within two months this they captured all this area and the main bastions of the rebellions which is Kidal has rapidly come to under the control of Mali and this gives a lot to say about this situation since the coup swept across the Sahelian countries all battling insurgencies Foreign troops deployed to assist in the anti-jihadist campaigns have either evacuated or asked to leave by the ruling juntas. Mali, Burkina Faso and most recently Niger have cancelled almost all military agreements with Western allies with supposedly strong know-how or capabilities. Niami, Ouagadougou and Bamako have all argued that their long presence made no significant impact occasioned by frequent terrorist attacks resulting in massive loss including of human lives. There are however experts who believe this decision will come at a cost such as allowing the free expansion of radical and extremist groups from the Sahel towards coastal states like Togo, Benin, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. A more edit has this report on the chronicle of foreign military deployment in West Africa. Several think tank and media outlets suggest that foreign military deployment and establishment of bases in Africa began in the early 2000s after the September 11 attack on the World Trade Center in America. In 2007, the U.S. Department of Defense unified its efforts on the continent, establishing the U.S. Africa Command. According to reports, the U.S. has a military presence in 14 countries and continues to grow its military footprint on the continent. Washington first deployed troops to Niger in 2013, with the number of American soldiers reaching 1,000 until it departed from the country in August 2024, following a regime change that led to the cancellation of military agreements. One of the bases established by the U.S. in Niger is the 101 Air Base in the capital Niamey and the second in Agadez. The 101 Air Base serves as a drone base at the cost of up to $110 million and is one of the largest U.S. drone bases in Africa, enabling America to conduct intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance activities covering almost the entire Sahel region, extending from the Atlantic coast of Africa to the Red Sea. Before the Americans, the French troops on Operation Bakan were the first to be evicted from Niger in December 2023, following the July 26 coup that toppled President Mohamed Bazoum. German troops, among other European Union member states, to have contributed to the counterterrorism campaign in the Sahel also made their way out, citing the volatile security situation in the region. Across the board in Burkina Faso, anti-French protests forced France to leave before the junta leader, Captain Brem Traoré, would in an official note communicate his request. It should be recalled that Mali began the frenzy of evicting foreign troops when Bamako asked France to pull out. 
While France finalized the withdrawal of troops, the United Nations multidimensional integrated mission, otherwise known as MINUSMA, terminated its mission to Mali on June 30, 2023, and completed its pullout of thousands of peacekeepers by December of the same year. This is at the request of Malian authorities and adopted by the UN. Germany made its way following the dissolution of MINUSMA. Meanwhile, reports indicate that France still has about 1,000 troops in Chad, 900 in Côte d'Ivoire, 350 in Senegal, and 400 in Gabon. With Russia now the number one ally of Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger under the AES Confederation, Moscow has an advantage to grow its influence while experts fear a rapid spread of violent and extremist groups in the sub-region. Imo Edet reporting there. All Western countries that have deployed troops to Africa, essentially West and Central Africa, did so to stabilize the countries, needing support to conduct intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance activities. Several jihadist groups operating in this region have for more than a decade launched attacks against military posts and civilian populations. Cumulatively, thousands of people have been killed and millions displaced. Other resulting consequences are food insecurity, disruption of education for thousands of children, lack of access to basic services including health, and the dire humanitarian crisis. For this and many more, the authorities in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Niger believe a foreign military presence failed to achieve the expected results. However, Amnesty International says the decision by the trio has further worsened the human rights situation in the Sahel. Usman Jalou is a senior researcher for the Sahel at Amnesty International, West and Central Africa Bureau. I think the human rights situation is pretty dire uh, across the Central Sahel, if you look at it, because uh, we have seen, like, this is a continued trend of uh, worsening uh, human rights violations, such as unlawful killings and extrajudicial executions that have continued to occur in Mali, Burkina Faso, uh, and done by both parties to the conflict, whether government forces and their proxies, or some of the armed groups, such as the Group for the uh, Support of Islam and Muslims, and the Islamic State in the Sahel province. This past few weeks, you have seen uh, probably the case for the killings of uh, civilians in Barcelona in Burkina Faso, in which, according to some local reports, civilians that were digging trenches uh, to support uh, the uh, war effort were... Uh, killed uh, during an attack by the uh, group for the support of Islam and Muslims. And at the same time, there were reports of the attack against a church in Kunla in Burkina Faso in the Boucle du Mouhou, where around a dozen uh, worshippers were killed. So I think this shows just the uh, bad state of the situation right now, if you look at it from the perspective of international humanitarian law. But if you look at the uh, scope in violations of civil and political rights, it's not... uh, improving at all. We have seen cases of uh, enforced disappearances and conscriptions in Burkina Faso against uh, independent and dissident voices. Uh, We have seen also the detention of uh, political actors in Mali. So on all of those fronts, we can see that the trends are really bad and it's not improving, whether in uh, matters related to the conflict or whether in uh, the matters related to civil and political rights. Usman Jalou is senior researcher for the Sahel at Amnesty International, West and Central Africa Bureau. Bram Posthumus, a journalist versatile with the Sahel region, says security has only deteriorated given the local, social and political dynamics in the respective countries. As to the question that you posed, is the security situation better? Unfortunately, the answer to that question must be no, it is not. It has not improved uh, for two reasons. The first reason is that coups in and of themselves usher in periods of instability, which means that uh, as the military start playing politics in the capital cities where they stage their coups, 
the uh, security situation in the countries that they are now supposed to govern get neglected and therefore it creates a vacuum which is filled in by non-state armed groups and unfortunately in the Sahel we have a large number of these non-state armed groups they call themselves jihadists, they call themselves self-defense militias, they call themselves rebels. But in any case, non-state armed groups always take uh, advantage of a situation in which there is a security vacuum as a result of a coup. And they will fill in the gap with brute force. And that's exactly what's happened in all three countries. You will recall that in the wake of the coups in all three countries, Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso, there has been an upsurge in violence. And unfortunately, that upsurge hasn't stopped. And... Um, there is a multitude of reasons for that, but the main reason is that as the military start playing politics, they take their eye off the ball, which is protecting your borders, protecting the population and making sure that the country is safe. And this is not happening. And the second reason is that uh, the choice of partners, especially in the three central Sahel countries that we're talking about, uh, Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger, has not led to an increase in security. On the contrary, it has led to an increase in insecurity. And the reason for this is that the Russian mercenaries that were brought in to help the juntas supposedly restore stability and, and, and restore order do the exact opposite. They act with complete impunity, are not accountable to anyone, cannot be held accountable to anyone, not even the authorities in the countries where they operate, and especially they create situations of uh, vengeance once again because once crimes that they commit go unpunished the people will revolt and the people will respond and this is exactly what we saw on the border between Mali and Algeria when there was the Tuareg rebel force that exacted revenge on both the Wagner mercenary force and their Malian partners in revenge of what they did after the capture of Kidal in November 2023, when they went on a rampage in the north and committed the most egregious human rights abuses, which never went punished. And this was one of the first invoices, if you like, that have come in, and there will be more to follow. So in conclusion, whether or not the actual presence or absence of foreign troops is the determining factor in this is, is unclear. I think it's got more to do with the uh, politically unstable situation that has been created by the coup d'etats rather than whether or not a French contingent or a European contingent or a Russian contingent is present or absent on the territory. It is the local political military dynamics that are in play here and coups very generally speaking, do not usher in a period of stability. They usher in a period of instability. And I think that's the bottom line you will be looking at. Bram Posthumus is a journalist with vast knowledge on the Sahel region. Joining us from Mali to discuss the security situation after the withdrawal of French and German troops, as well as the UN peacekeeping force, is Mamadi Tabili a journalist and security analyst. Well, we can say there's a big difference. Uh, there's a big difference between uh, the time of the regime of Ibrahim, the former president, uh, Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, may he soon rest in peace. And that period, Mali was really uh, very in a difficult situation, in a very critical situation, because at that time, uh, to be honest, with the presence of, uh, with the, presence of uh, the uh, international corporations with Mali, different countries uh, that were involving MINUSMA and all these international supports of Mali to re-establish the security in Mali. With all these presence, the situation was worse than it is today. Because at this time, uh, you couldn't pass a month or two if there is uh, there is not a village being uh, burned up or being uh, attacked where you can where you have about like uh, hundred people killed, fifty people killed every two weeks. Or three, you will hear such a large amount going from 10 to 20 people killed in the village. 
So that was permanent in the Malians' daily life. So people were kind of fed up. And that's these situation that also brought the Malian populations to revolt against the presence of all these. And that is the, the situation that even irritated all the population of Mali. Why? Because they just said, how come with such an amount of group of people, estimated about 3,000 people, like a group of terrorists, been defeating a whole country because we knew Mali was not well equipped and this problem happened to Mali. Of course, a whole country, while Mali is disarmed and they cannot fight the terrorism, of course. But how come Mali, including all these foreign presence with these uh, very powerful country, countries like France, Germany, and many others, with including also the United Nations, how come all, with all these presence, they could not defeat only 3,000 people, you know, just so moving around the desert and terrorizing the whole country. First off, do we really know or understand the conditions that these foreign allies or Western allies of Mali deploy their troops and what sort of operations they would be conducting in Mali? Because I think like in the case of MINUSMA, it wasn't more like them walking alongside the Malian army in combating terrorism, but rather safeguarding populations against a terrorist attack. So I think for most countries, uh, the conditions were different. But help us understand how these countries came to be in Mali and what they were supposed to do. Yes, when I say with uh, the presence of these all these international forces, uh, it doesn't spare MINUSMA at all because, uh, first of all, France come to fight the terrorism. Just, you know, we fight terrorism here in Mali, in the Sahel, generally, to avoid the terrorism to increase and cross the border, reach the European countries. That's one thing. So they're here with the, against, allied with the Malians to fight the terrorism, not to maintain peace or not to stop uh, terrorism to attack villages or whatever. These, these are the presence of France and other countries, the Europeans. But MINUSMA... They are also here to safeguard the populations and to stop the people, uh, stop the terrorists to attack populations, is to protect the populations. But still, also there we don't have any results. Was not, there were no benefits. I mean, these mandates of the MINUSMA uh, were not uh, really uh, matching with the, uh, with the needs of the Malian populations. So they were need to change maybe their mandates, which it never happens up to their departure. Now, but from your understanding and maybe uh, research documents or um, perspectives by security experts in Mali, yourself being one of them, uh, what do you think are some of the reasons or factors that really sabotaged efforts by Western troops deployed in Mali to help fight against the insurgency? Was there, for instance, an issue of the lack of synergy among the different army units or collaboration from the civil population? Uh, not only the collaborations of the civil populations, the army were totally weakened. It w very, it, I mean, it complicates to have a coordination where there's a lack of everything. In this kind of uh, uh, a dislocated army, it is very difficult to face like a unity, to get a unit and to face one, one, one enemy. That was difficult. And among even the Malian army, there were lots, a lot of people collaborating even with uh, uh, those enemies, which was difficult. So it was completely difficult to, to arrange the situations. So I think all these situations brought Mali to rebuild again the army, which is happening now with uh, the, uh, the current president, uh, to unify again the army so that they can be able uh, to face the, the, the common enemy. Because uh, the, before all these teams, there were kind of the Bere Rouge and the Bere Ver were no matching each other. They don't understand each other in all they think. There was no coordination. But I think now uh, they're trying to rebuild this uh, coordination little by little. Mali has sent uh, foreign forces piking from the country, including the UN peacekeeping force, mm -hmm. MINUSMA. Uh, we also saw Niger, mm -hmm. since the coup in mm -hmm. July 2023 till date, has sent foreign forces deployed in the country, including the US and uh, Germany and France, out yeah. of the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, would you say oh, yeah. that the security yeah. situation across yeah, yeah, the Sahel yeah, yeah, yeah. in yeah. these three countries, well, all under military rule, has improved? I think since the departure, the security situation has been improved in many ways. 
in many ways. Today, of course, this uh, war has uh, since the beginning, as expert, many experts have mentioned that uh, it's a problem of uh, a, it's a, it's a asymmetric war where people you don't know who is jihadist today and he's a civilian tomorrow he just did his forfeit and after he just get mingled with the people you don't know who is who with the situation is was not easy there were many people who says what well, they give the impression about this fighting but what happened with the departure of these international forces the malian army now who has taken uh, over all the power concerning the uh, situation now first we see the improvement on the ground where they reconquered many areas which were not uh which were not under the malian control since for many years from almost a decade and but in a within a two within two months or three maximum they re they they regain again this they captured all this area those places those country, uh, towns has come under the control of the malian army and the main bastions of the rebellions which is kidal has rapidly come to the, under the control of mali and this gives a lot to say about this situation secondly uh, the 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 informations concerning the intelligence information that was given which was uh, sabotaged by by the former western forces as we can say as even it was been said but still this again is another another uh, confirmations of it because with this current uh, army who's uh, leading this army the malian is taking on the top is taking over uh the power on all these uh, uh terrorist groups on the ground because uh they as today um, as we can see that today the 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 the, the, the fear has changed uh, the side because now is the terrorists who the malian guys went to find and seek them where they're hiding and trying to capture or even neutralize them but before it was not that malian was cantoned in a base where they can't move out and you find that they've been always while they are in the base in the camp they get attacked by those terrorists what happened then and why they were not allowed to go out so all these coordinations with the western uh, i mean uh, forces on the ground here uh, it shows its limits total limits that uh, we couldn't be get out of this situation for even a less for even a one a more decade or two decade again we couldn't finish with the problem so like mm. you said mm. in the face of resilience the cost for which the military government in power today says um, that it is recapturing lost territories, is that um, innocent civilians are being killed. At least that is what the UN says. Oh, yeah, that's what the, the, the UN said, that the innocent civilian has been killed. You know, this is very difficult to say. It's very difficult to say. Uh, if I have to refer to what the Malian army have said, Malian army have said they have been neutralized terrorists, armed people. And some UN people said something different. And to testify that from how you can explain that uh, it's only civilian has been killed while the Malian army and the official statements announced that they killed, they neutralized terrorists. You know, that's a very difficult question from that side. But of course, in the fighting, everything could happen in the fighting. And you can understand that it's not a small fight. These, where the Malian is fighting this situation now in the place where it's called Tinzawaken, it's one of the bastion, the place of the, ter the of the of the ter international terrorism based in this area. Of course, in this fight, it couldn't be easy, and everything could be happen. But testifying that only civilian has been killed, I think this is also a lack of faith accusing Malian government that uh, the only civilian Bill Kid. I don't think if that Mali, is, Mali army is only fighting civilians. But even verifying this mm. information is almost difficult because the affected parts of Mali are almost cut off of communication and there is no right of passage or access uh, by journalists, for instance, who intend to go and dig and get the necessary information. Ah, concerning the informations, concerning going there to get the information in this, I think this, it depends on the army, the control of the army. Army is in fighting in an area which is very quite dangerous. Of course, there could be a journalist who would like to go there. It, because for Malian journalists, I don't think they forbid any Malian journalists to go there or to go in the north to cover whatever they wanted to cover. I don't think that. This is not officially. It's only foreign journalists. It's set for the foreign journalists. And for the foreign journalists also, it doesn't happen today. This happened since 2020. 
before any kind of exaction or whatever they say that the Malian army has done, which of none of them would happen before. But since then, the international journalists have been, uh, uh, there's no accreditation for those who can go come in Mali and travel. And it's not even journalists. I think for the moment, for the security reason, Mali even, there's a kind of a restriction to enter in the country. People can enter in the country, but for the security reason, there are many things which is not so easier as before. And this is the general security of the country. But for the Malian journalists who work, they think they can go to the north and they, they cover, they didn't forbid no one to do so. Mamadi Tabil is a Malian journalist and security analyst. This is where we wrap up on today's episode of In the Sahel, WADR's security program aiming to tell the African security crisis the African way. Thank you for listening and many thanks to my guests and colleagues for their contributions. Join this frequency, 94.9 FM, West Africa Democracy Radio, every Friday at 7.30 a.m. and the same day at 6.30 p.m. for the rebroadcast. I'm Abdullah Hassan. It's a bye for now.